headlines of VTV News. Vietnam's economy continues strong recovery in the first five months. Job market on steady recovery. And later on in our world news friend, Germany leaders say Ukraine allowed to strike Russian military bases. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Hello and welcome to VTV News, broadcast live to you from Hanoi. You're with me, Lina Phạm, and here's the top news of the hour. The National Assembly spent a full-day plenary session on Wednesday to discuss the socio-economic situation and state budget for 2023 and the first few months of 2024, while highlighting Vietnam's continued recovery and its position among the highest-growing economies in the world. National Assembly deputies also proposed several solutions to effectively implement the socio-economic development plan for the entire year. Deputies have applauded the government and the Prime Minister's efforts to promote socio-economic development. They have also suggested solutions to bolster growth drivers, including the processing and manufacturing industry. With the government's flexible management, we achieved many positive results, such as 5.05% economic growth. In comparison, neighboring countries like South Korea only achieved 1.4%, Japan 1.9%, and Singapore 1.2%. This is a commendable achievement. I propose that the government soon introduce policies and mechanisms to promote manufacturing and processing industry breakthroughs. This would allow the industry to become a pillar of the economy, driving the growth of all industries. I asked the government to analyze the impacts of recently issued law on growth pillars, especially though put in effect earlier than planned. They should focus on legislation that supports the implementation of the land law and other real estate related laws to ensure its synchronization with the market rules. The deputies are also concerned about the delays in responding to queries and resolving complaints and issues faced by citizens and businesses in some localities. They urged the governments to continue giving firm directions so officials can perform their duties more efficiently. I welcome the issuance of Resolution 73 on protecting officials who dare to act as they believe. I propose the Prime Minister approve a cross-ministry circular that outlines the specific implementation of the resolution. The circular will support the officials' compliance with the resolution. Administration reform should be promoted further, enhancing transparency and reducing negativities of obstructing business activities. Resolution number 73 and other prime ministerial decrees should be strictly implemented to protect dynamic and strong-willed officials who act for the sake of common benefits. According to the latest report from the General Statistics Office, the export and import turnover in the past five months is estimated at over 305.5 billion US dollars. This marks a significant increase of 16.6 percent compared to the same period last year. Industrial production maintained an upward trend and the service sector recorded vibrant growth in the first five months of 2024. Despite global fluctuations, Vietnam's economic and social conditions have remained positive. The Industrial Production Index, or IPI, is estimated to increase by 6.8 percent, while all key industrial sectors are set to see significant growth. This company has just begun exporting between 90,000 and 100,000 car fan products annually to the North American market, a contract that is difficult to secure during a period of low demand. Diversifying designs with 3D modeling and investing in molds for each design gives the company an advantage. Compared to the simple processing method that requires waiting for customers to bring samples for assembly, 
early cooperation helps us expand opportunities to strengthen cooperation and find customer segments and product lines with better profit margins. The manufacturing and processing industry also leads in attracting foreign direct investment FDI, from the beginning of the year, reaching over 7.43 billion US dollars. This accounts for about 67% of total registered investment capital. FDI for implementation reached its highest level in the past five years with 8.25 billion US dollars, up 7.8% compared to last year. This affirms the attractiveness of Vietnam's investment environment and provides abundant foreign currency supply to support exchange rate stability. Exchange rate pressures will ease, and sector's business results will support a positive growth outlook. This is a chance for the market to recover. The tourism sector continues to make breakthroughs with promotional programs. In the past five months, the country welcomed nearly 7.6 million international visitors, up 64.9% compared to the same period last year and surpassing the pre-COVID-19 pandemic level. These positive signals indicate that economic policies are on the right track. Ministries, sectors, and localities are seriously and decisively implementing the solutions outlined in the government's Resolution No. 01 on Socioeconomic Development and Resolution No. 65 at the regular government meeting in April 2024. Therefore, the socioeconomic situation remains positive this year, with a stable macroeconomy, controlled inflation, and balanced major economic indicators. However, the global situation continues to evolve unpredictably, posing many risks to economic stability in development worldwide, including in Vietnam. Therefore, in recent directives, the Prime Minister has emphasized the need to monitor, analyze, and forecast the market closely. In addition, effective policy responses should be carried out timely to synchronize with the management of macroeconomic policies. As of mid-May, Vietnam's trade turnover reached more than 270 billion US dollars, an increase of nearly 17 percent over the same period. Specifically, exports reached over 138 billion US dollars, while imports, especially raw materials, increased sharply. However, to date, the trade surplus remains at over 6.35 billion US dollars. This is one of eight electronic circuit board production lines that this factory has just installed to meet new orders. From only 40,000 products exported last year, the company has received more orders for electronic components this year thanks to entry into new export markets. This year we have signed orders of about 8 million products a year. It takes advantage of all the free trade agreements that Vietnam has signed. By mid-May, the country's total import value reached over $132 billion, up 17.5% over the same period. This increase is due to businesses stepping up their imports of machinery, equipment and raw materials. This enterprise's domestic orders have increased by 25 to 30% over the same period last year. The company also has new export contracts to the U.S. and is speeding up its import of machinery and raw materials. This year, we have invested in equipment such as laser cutting machines and steel pipes. One cutting machine can replace three other manual machines. The total import-export turnover of the first quarter increased by 15.5 percent over the same period, but by mid-May, this speed is higher, reaching 16.8 percent. It is forecasted that this year, international trade of goods will flourish and positively impact domestic export production. As of May 15 this year, the average monthly export turnover was about 30.8 billion US dollars. The total export turnover for 2024 will likely exceed the 2022 record of about 372 billion US dollars. This scenario is credible because Vietnam's main export markets, the US and Europe, have controlled inflation, increased labor wages, and sharply reduced remaining inventories. Therefore, their imports from Vietnam are likely to increase. 
The southern province of Barrio Vungto topped the league table in attracting the most foreign investment capital in the year's first four months. Between January and April, Barrio Vungto lured 1.52 billion U.S. dollars in overseas funding, equaling 16.4 percent of the total foreign investment. Among the projects are South Korean uh, Hyongsung's 720 million U.S. dollars biofiber techno factory and and Japanese Toso Corporation's 176 million U.S. dollars chemical project in Fumitri Industrial Park. In the first four months of this year, Vietnam had a consolidated registered foreign investment capital of 9.27 billion U.S. dollars, up 4.5 percent on year. The Ministry of Planning and Investment assesses that FDI capital flows focus on provinces and cities with advantages in infrastructure, human resources, and administrative procedures. As of May the 20th, the total capital registered by foreign investors for renewing, adjusting, contributing capital to buy shares and purchasing capital contributions has exceeded 11 billion U.S. dollars, marking a 2% year-on-year increase. There has been an almost 51% surge in newly registered investment capital compared to the same period last year. This means that in the first five months of the year, Vietnam has recorded recorded the largest increase in investment capital. The multinational corporation is investing in waste treatment projects to generate electricity in Hanoi, Phú Thọ, Thanh Hóa, Hải Dương, Hải Phòng, and Ho Chi Minh City. Total investment capital reached about 2 billion US dollars. Among them, this project on the outskirts of Hanoi is the largest waste to energy plant in Southeast Asia. Vietnam is among the countries with the fastest economic growth rate in Southeast Asia. The Vietnamese government does not trade off its economic growth for the quality of the environment. We are determined to build the world's first five-star environmental center in Vietnam. Since the beginning of the year, many large waste-to-energy projects like this have been newly invested and expanded by foreign investors in Vietnam. Among them, Singapore is the largest foreign investor in Vietnam. Meanwhile, China invests in the most new projects and South Korea leads in the number of investment capital increases. Large corporations will invest heavily in Vietnam. Supporting companies will also further enhance investments in Vietnam. These moves demonstrate the South Korean investors' confidence in Vietnam's potential. We have conducted reviews with international organizations and associations to understand the plans of large corporations that tend to shift investment. Vietnamese senior leaders meet representatives of the world's top corporations in person to invite them to seek business opportunities in Vietnam. Recently, the Ministry of Planning and Investment has advised the government to direct a review of the investment environment, aiming to intensively reform and simplify investment and business procedures. This effort includes improving the legal framework, devising porting policies to attract projects in emerging sectors. The clam farming sector in the Mekong Delta province of Binh Che has received a Marine Stewardship Council MSC cert certification, marking the third time it has met the organization's the sustainability and management standards. The certificate will be valid from May the 23rd, 2024 to May the 22nd, 2029. The MSC fishery standard assesses if a fishery is well managed and sustainable. According to the department being a recertified by the MSC is an advantage for Bin Che as it will allow it to expand its consumption markets and create community consensus on the sustainable development of the province clam exploitation and management. Bin Che currently has nearly 3,000 hectares of clam farming which can potentially be expanded five-fold in the future.
Vietnam's rice output is expected to reach 43 million tons in 2024, which can ensure domestic consumption and export demand of more than 8 million tons, according to the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Due to El Nino and climate change impact, the global rice output in the 2023 to 2024 crop is forecast to drop to nearly 518 million tons, while the consumption demand is 520. 5 million tons. This means the world will face a shortage of about 7 million tons of grain this year. This is an opportunity for rice exporters, including Vietnam. The country can export 8.13 million tons this year while ensuring domestic food security at the same time. In the first five months of 2024, Vietnam earned 2.32 billion US dollars from shipping. 3.6 million tons of rice abroad. And before we move to the next part of VTV News, let's check out how the Vietnam Dong is weighed against other currencies in the world market today. Coming up next, job market on steady recovery. And Vietnamese cuisine in top 100 most attractive street foods in Asia. In the first half of this year, the industrial production sector has demonstrated a robust recovery, presenting more employment opportunities. Notably, businesses are on a hiring spree, signaling a positive trend in the labor market. This enterprise is expanding its production and plans to recruit 2,000 more workers. It offers thorough on-the-job training for unskilled laborers. We want and are trying to expand our production. We are in need of large groups of new hires. The textile, garment and footwear industries are also seeing a surge in labor recruitment. To attract workers, companies are raising wage floors and enhancing welfare programs. We are recruiting a large number of workers. We are committed to ensuring a transparent salary and benefit policy over due payments are strictly a no-go. In April, the economy is sustained a positive growth across agriculture, industry and services, leading to a sharp rise in labor demand. Projections indicate that Ho Chi Minh City will need approximately 77,000 workers, while Hanoi will require about 44,000 in the second quarter of 2024. If we can tap into high-paying markets, our businesses can boost their sales and therefore improve the livelihoods of contracted workers. However, companies with new orders need help recruiting young workers. Recently, there have been difficulties in attracting local talents, especially young workers who frequently change jobs. Efforts to enhance employment and connections between localities are underway. Improved mobility is expected to make it easier for workers to seek opportunities in various regions, broadening their job prospects. In Quảng Nam province, home to nine mountainous districts, many villages remain isolated by rough terrain. Local residents have uh, resorted to temporary uh, bridges for daily commutes. Recently, social organizations have joined forces to eliminate hundreds of these hazardous uh, crossings, building safer routes to school for children and more efficient transport of essentials and agricultural goods. Cha Kang Kamun is the most disadvantaged locality in Nam Cha Mi district. Dozens of students from Bak Bin village crossed makeshift bridges to attend school every day. At the same time, hundreds of households depend on them for medical visits and supplies. Local authorities have mobilized support from social organizations and the local community to construct sturdier bridges. <laughs> 
We encourage local people to help with the on-site delivery of construction materials. It only took three days. Each new bridge costs nearly 4,000 US dollars. Completed in just a week, they have transformed the way of life in Chakang commune. Students now enjoy a safer, shorter trip to school and transporting necessities and agricultural products to and from the commune has become more convenient. The rainy season no longer sparks fears a bridge collapse. I remember having to stay home during rainy days because it was impossible to cross the submerged bridge. Now I can maintain my attendance. I'm really happy that a good bridge has been built. We have removed almost all makeshift bridges in the vicinity and built new ones entirely thanks to community source support. Over the past few years, in addition to state projects, social organizations have financed nearly 50 bridge construction projects in Nam Cha Mi district alone. This program has solved the isolation problem that affects residential areas during heavy rains. It has shortened travel distances and accelerated efforts to combat poverty in Quang Nam's mountainous regions. The life standards of the Khmer ethnic people in Vietnam are improving. This achievement is thanks to programs and projects under ethnic policies and the efforts of the people themselves. The great unity of ethnic groups has also been strengthened. More in the following story. This is one of the newly built houses for Khmer ethnic people who face financial difficulties. Their drawing is doubled when they achieve a bamboo rice crop with favorable prices. This factor plays a crucial role in lifting them out of poverty. Currently, newly built houses for people are tiled and made of stable concrete. Residential areas for landless households were also established according to the state's directive. The authorities at all levels pay special attention to improving the lives of Khmer people. They have presented gifts to poor and near-poor households, which has brought great joy to the people. Gan Thơ is currently home to over 23,000 Khmer people, with only about 50 poor households remaining. Nearly 2,500 households received preferential loans. Thanks to that, the number of poor and near-poor households has decreased sharply each year. The city focuses on implementing support policies regarding residential land, housing, health, education, and especially job creation and vocational training. In the Mekong Delta region, there are 222 communes classified as difficult and extremely difficult areas for ethnic groups. Provinces like Sok Chang, Chia Vinh, and Kinzang have been particularly effective in implementing programs and projects under ethnic policies. Faced with aircraft shortages, many airlines have increased the number of summer peak night flights by nearly 46 percent compared to usual. Accordingly, Vietnam Airlines will offer for sale nearly 300,000 air tickets at very attractive prices during this year's summer peak season. Vietjet will provide an additional 1.4 million tickets, equivalent to 3,100 night flights, on routes from Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh City, Da Nang and Nha Trang, to and from the provinces. Phu Quoc Island in the Mekong Delta province of Kinzang has been honored by U.S. magazine Travel and Leisure as one of the 10 most affordable tropical destinations to visit around the world. According to the magazine, getting to Phu Quoc does require connecting flights and high fare costs. But once you arrive at the slice of paradise, it's incredible value, it's said. Rooms at top-rated resorts start at just 75 US dollars. The night markets in Zhengdong overflow with cheap and delicious eats. It also noted free leisure activities such as basking in the sunshine on the white sand beaches and hiking through Phu Quoc National Park. Five delicious Vietnamese dishes have just been listed among Asia's top 100 most appealing street foods. The list was published by the international culinary website Taste Atlas. The foods highlighted are uh, bread, pho, broken rice, spring rolls, and bánh xèo. 
This is not the first time Vietnamese cuisine has been named among the most famous dishes in Asia and the world. Recently, the famous culinary website Taste Atlas also announced that bánh mì ranked first in the 100 best sandwiches in the world with a rating of 4.6 over 5 stars. Last year, in a poll of uh, the 50 most attractive street foods in Asia, CNN listed traditional Vietnamese uh, cuisine as having three dishes on this list, bread, pho, and iced coffee. And up next is our coming up. French German leaders say Ukraine allowed to strike Russian military bases. An Israeli tank seen advancing further into Rafa despite global pressure. France and Germany's leaders said on Tuesday that Ukraine should be allowed to hit military sites inside Russia from which missiles were being fired at Ukrainian territory. French President Emmanuel Macron said at a joint news conference that Ukraine should be allowed to neutralize military sites from which Ukraine is attacked. However, he stressed that it must not hit other targets in Russia, especially civilian ones. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said he agreed with Macron. He added that as long as Ukraine respected the conditions given by a country that supplies the weapons and international law, it could defend itself. Earlier, Russian President Vladimir Putin warned that proposing to let Ukraine use Western-supplied weapons to strike inside Russia could trigger a global conflict. Israeli forces are pushing deeper into the southern Gaza city of Rafah despite international calls to halt the offensive. Israel's tanks were seen entering central Rafah on Tuesday as the international community urged Israel to stop its assault on the city. They arrived two days after a strike on a Rafah camp killed at least 45 displaced Palestinians on May the 26th. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed that the attack was a catastrophic incident while confirming that an investigation into it was underway. Nearly 80 years after World War II ended, its memories and remnants remain vivid for many people. In France, Normandy, a region, the site of the 1944 D-Day invasion, wartime bunkers and murals are being revitalized to convey historical values. On the English Channel coast in Normandy, graffiti artist Blesia is painting a sea turtle on a World War II era bunker. Graffiti artists have transformed these rare wartime relics into vibrant creations. This is the chance to revive what has been lost in time, which has also served to offer a fresh perspective on relic sites. I wish onlookers wouldn't simply look at them and go about their days. I want them to appreciate it and take photos of it. Nearby, a restaurant named Six Six commemorates the historic Normandy landing on June 6, 1944. This restaurant preserves wartime murals and stories, acting as a living museum of history. The murals, first created in 1945, are authentic relics of the post-war era. At Six Sixths, we aim to depict the profound suffering endured and the resilience shown by the people during that time. We are committed to preserving this memory. The war had a devastating impact on Normandy, claiming the lives of approximately 20,000 civilians. Generations continue to preserve these historical traces, aiming to pass on the stories of a war-torn Europe to future generations. This effort also helps the remaining veterans heal their psychological wounds. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast.
And that's it for this edition of VTV News. Thank you very much for watching. To rewatch our program, you can download VTV Go from App Store or Google Play or tune in our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash VTV4Go. Goodbye for now.